pension skill. So if you take uh, the first one, 12 percent inference, inference depends on what comprehension skill. Sentences, no doubt it depends on grammar knowledge. Complement, again based on comprehension. Errors, gra grammar knowledge. Sentence, grammar knowledge. There are three based on grammar, but all other like inference, complement, parajumble, close, passage, all these depend on comprehension. So almost 80% uh, comprehension based and 20% uh, grammar based. Okay. Now we'll go to the actual paper. So we'll start the session uh, with the actual questions. Questions 121 to 125. Here you see a small paragraph. Based on that, they have given five questions. So what is this paragraph about? It is about television programs. It is about the viewers. It is about the, based on a particular study, it is related to the advertisers or ad agencies. So three dimensions are there the programs, the viewers, and the ad agency people. Now, two of these questions go with the vocabulary based on the context, and three of them go with the comprehension skill. Among the three, two questions based on inference. Inference, not that easy. You've got to read very carefully. Every option you have to check carefully. Only then you can decide. But we'll start with the first question, question number 121. Which of the following is most nearly the same in meaning as the word feel, as used in the passage? So what is the first word here? Poor. Does it make any sense? Does it go with the context? No. What is the second word? Sympathize. Even that doesn't go with the context. Perceive. Perceive means to feel. So what is the answer here? The third option is the answer, perceive. Evolve doesn't go with this context. Sensitize also doesn't go with this context. But we'll see the sentence. To so what is the sentence here? This additional piece of information could prove valuable for advertisers who might be well advised to spend their advertising money for programs that viewers feel are of high quality, perceive of high quality. So the answer is a third option. Now we'll go to question number 122. Which of the following is most nearly the opposite in meaning? And what is the word given? Divergent. Where is the word in the passage or the paragraph? Hmm. So programs with identical ratings in terms of numbers of people watching received highly divergent marks for quality from their viewers. Divergent marks. So based on the context, what do you think? Divergent means similar or not similar? Homogeneous or heterogeneous? So we will see the options. What is the first one? But here the question says, you have to find out the opposite word. Please underline opposite of divergent. Pointed has nothing to do with divergence. So ruled out. Similar. Divergent means what? Heterogeneous. What is opposite? Homogeneous or similar. Hold this one. And heterogeneous, divergent, synonyms. Ruled out. Synonymous, that is not acceptable. Focused, again not correct. So based on the question, what is opposite of divergent? It is similar. These two questions are very easy. This paper, actually all these papers, what they're trying to do what I feel personally, they're trying to test the stress levels of the candidates. Now two questions, one model, three questions, one model, and based on comprehension, generally you're conditioned to see five questions as a set. Five questions, errors, five questions, a parajumble, five questions, something else. Now all of a sudden, you see one question, one particular model, 
two questions a different model then there are two problems one suddenly you have to become alert and if those questions are rather difficult then you panic and once you panic the whole thing is gone and once you see lengthy sentences new models obviously you get uh, scared and you panic so please remember whatever take one question at a time and read the question very carefully or take one particular type at a time and try to read and answer the questions and don't expect the same pattern five questions or 10 questions now those days are gone that's what i feel so you should be prepared for this yesterday's paper was good in my opinion this paper is also good good in the sense from which angle one is level of difficulty second the mo the pattern more or less what we saw last year what we have seen this year so that means what slowly those who are setting the papers they want our students to get used to the new models and new patterns all these go with new models and new patterns now let us move on to question number 123 Please underline the word inferences. Which of the following inferences can best be drawn from the above paragraph? The number of viewers decided the quality of the programs. Can viewers decide the quality of the program? No. Mark it wrong. The viewers' perception about the quality of programs is significant for advertisers. To decide whether it is right or wrong, First, you have to know the meaning of the word significant. Please underline the word significant. Sign significant means, please write the meaning, important. What is the meaning of the word significant? Important. Third option, hold that one, hold the second option. The poor quality programs have very few viewers. So that has nothing to do with this para paragraph. Advertisers can derive benefit from the information about viewers' perception of quality of programs. This also seems correct. So of the five options, again, level of difficulty, usually what they try to do, three options, one reading, you can keep them aside. And two options, you cannot decide. It is like to be or not to be. To select this one or to select that one. Now tell me between, please, I told you to hold the second option. What is the second option? What is the key word here? Significant. Will you go for the second option? And the fourth option also seems more or less acceptable. Advertisers can derive benefit from the information about viewers' perception of quality of programs. And what is the second option? The viewers' perception about the quality of programs is significant for advertisers. Between the two, which one seems better? The, the second one or the fourth one? How many of you have chosen the second option? That's the right answer. It is significant. Whatever the viewers perceive, that is significant. That is important. And why not the fourth one? You may ask, sir, why not the fourth one? Here, advertisers can derive benefit from the information about viewers' perception. That is the next level. First level is what? Something is important. Then the second level, deriving benefit from that, or using that information and going to the next level. So when you look at the order, the first one is a second option and the fourth one is a second option. Based on that, you have to go for the second option is the answer. Please make a note. Question number 123, answer is a second option. Question number 124, which of the following is or are the finding or findings of the study? Option A, the viewers decide the prime term television programs. That is not correct. The viewers can never decide a particular program. The attitudes of viewers cannot be reliably assessed. This is also not correct. If you take the right approach, you can, the survey will be reliable or the study will be reliable. Now, what is the third option? The advertisers were benefited from good quality programs. Here, the key says a third option. Am I right? But this particular sentence, which tense is it? Past. In the passage, does the writer talk about past anywhere? Is it in present or is it in past? Not even one verb is in past. So that means what? Can we consider the third option? No, it has not been mentioned anywhere. Had he used present, 
perhaps we can we could have considered and here because the sentence is in past form definitely it cannot be considered so based on that what is the answer how many of you have chosen the fifth option you chose the fifth option that is really good that is good now question number 125 which of the following can be inferred underline the word inferred and all of you remember i have been telling uh, since uh, last year bank people slowly they are going in the direction of cat exam if you take cat you all know the exam cat what is cat common admission test conducted for mba students across the country all these questions 16 onwards many models used by the bank people they are basically cat questions cat models so i started telling students way back in 16 please refer cat guides please refer cat previous years papers once you have an idea they may not give up the same standard cat standards are very high but they use the same models here and there and bring down the standards once you have an idea this is how they ask the questions when it comes to the cat exam then it will be easy for you to answer the questions now you are used to bank patterns suddenly you go take the test you see some new models then obviously you cannot handle all of a sudden whereas you practice or you have a look at cat models when you go take the exam you see more or less the same models then how do you feel what do you think everything looks familiar then it becomes easy for you to answer the questions and questions related to inference questions related to match last year this year i was told uh, sbi clerk mains i was told they gave new models english and one of the models they gave sentences one sentence let's say four sentences one column another four sentences another column and they wanted the candidates to match the sentences based on the meanings that is nothing but cat model again you see here five sentences or five sentences four are right one is wrong traditional model but here four are wrong one is right you have to find out the right one so all these are cat models again i have been telling yesterday in the paper we got one question uh, five questions uh, one word one example then you have to replace that particular word based on the meaning you have to choose another word do you remember you got five questions words like uh, loopholes all those that is nothing but cat model and yesterday i last year i predicted one more model related to vocabulary in cat model one of the models what they do they take one word and they give four meanings of that word english on an average every word has a, has about four or five meanings so they give they take a simple word they give four meanings they give four examples so you have to match the meaning and the the sentence example sentence that means in a way for one mark you are working on how many questions four or five questions so indirectly what are you supposed to what is that you are losing from your point of view time very good i appreciate you so indirectly they are putting pressure on you from two angles one is this i have been telling for the since last year one is your comprehension level earlier the passages were damn easy close was very easy para jumble one reading candidates would manage and they would get the correct order but nowadays today's passage have you read i would like to ask a question how many of you have read today's passage please raise your hands not even five students not even 10 students i know the reason the passage is about sorry you haven't taken you haven't taken this mock test no paper 10 is not there have you got paper 10 no no paper 10 no no paper 10 because i think they gave a holiday in vijayawada on the eve of bakreed so whenever there is a holiday we get the papers from vijayawada whenever there is a holiday over there then we don't get that particular paper so 10 paper we haven't got ninth you expect obviously 10 paper that's what you are trying to say no it is 11th paper what is the reason i think it was a holiday for them has anyone got let me cross check 
Has anyone bought paper tin? No. Still you have a question. Where is the tenth paper? No, there is no paper as such. You wrote where? Hmm. No, no, no. I don't know some confusion, but I am not the right person to answer that question. Uh, let us not waste time. Today, I was told to explain paper number 11. You all have the hard copy. Which number is it? What is the number? Model test 11. So let us not waste time. We'll go ahead with this paper. Fine. So what is that I was talking about? Uh, cat questions. So I said uh, one word, four meanings, and uh, four uh, uh, examples you have to match. So basically, last uh, two or three years, bank people, especially, this was started by SBI, 2016. It was a shock for many candidates. In fact, many candidates, 2016 SBI PO paper, literally they saw stars. They saw stars during the day. You understand what I say? They didn't know what to do. Completely jammed, complete panic. But after that, IBPS, IBPS followed the footsteps of SBI. And now both SBI, IBPS, more or less the same standards. And last year, in fact, IBPS, RRB, PO, people saw stars during the day. Means it was really tough. That is the reason why last year, IBPS, RRB, PO, the cutoff was 1.75 marks. Can you imagine? Paper was really tough. Not a joke. That paper. If you get in the range of eight or nine, it's an accomplishment, a great thing. So no wonder the cutoff was 1.75. Now, to put it in a nutshell, what I'm trying to tell, many students over here, in spite of being told repeatedly, they are obsessed with English grammar. I don't know why. They always, English means they think grammar. Those days are gone. Please understand today, if you are really serious about getting selected, only one thing matters. That is your reading habit. How well you can understand complicated information, how fast you can understand. So two things are important. Higher level of comprehension and the speed of reading. How can you get these two? You have to read every day. Every day you should make it a habit to read a variety of topics. One day economy, the next day polity, third day science and technology. So Monday to Saturday you have a strategy. Every day you take one particular passage that goes with one particular area. That way what happens, you get exposed to the divergent topics or uh, you see the variation. Then you understand the writer's style, you get exposed to the uh, different uh, words, you are right, you'll be ready for the exam. But always you read economy related passages. Imagine in the exam they give a passage that goes with polity. Again you will not be able to handle. So be prepared, take a holistic approach. I use the word holistic. Holistic means what? Touching every dimension. Now, so inferred from there, this is, these questions are very difficult, basically cat model. So which of the following can be inferred from the contents of the paragraph? Option number one or A, advertisement can have some effect on the viewer's buying habits. It is true, but not mentioned in the passage. You should always consider what is mentioned in the passage. You should not go outside the framework. Money spent on advertising with high quality programs yields more profits. This is again not mentioned, but you can, it is implied. Already have used many a time two words. When you read the passage, you have to think of some questions are based on explicit information and some questions are based on implicit information. Explicit means what? Direct. You see it in the passage. Implicit means what? It is not there, but it is implied. This one is implied. This one is implied, though it is not there. So please tick. Money spent on advertising with high quality programs yields more profits. 
Based on the context, this can be considered. Different programs with equal number of viewers can be rated differently as far as quality is concerned. The passage is all about that. The passage is all about different viewers. See, different programs with equal number of viewers can be rated differently as far as quality is concerned. The passage is all about that. Numbers are not important. The rating is important. Same number of people watch the programs, but they rate the programs differently. So what does it mean? You can consider C also. So based on this, what is the answer? Only B and C, which option is that? Fourth option is the answer. But let me tell you, in the exam, whenever you come across questions related to inference or complementary sentence, you got to be very careful. Because once you panic, you are under tremendous pressure, you cannot handle any question related to comprehension. You cannot handle, because under pressure, we cannot uh, comprehend something. You have to remain cool only then. Whereas, if you take grammar questions, you are under tremendous pressure, but you are really good at English grammar, and one reading, you will be able to spot the error. There, you will not have any problem. But comprehension related, especially questions related to inference or uh, writer's views or something like complementary, paragraph, conclusion, all these, you got to be very careful. And remember, before you start reading, tell yourself, I can do this. It is relative. If I can do, others can do. If I cannot do, others cannot do. Please remember, this particular passage, when I asked the question, how many of you have read today's passage? I did not expect, frankly speaking, more than 10 students. Very simple reason. The moment you see a thousand word passage, I think uh, 1,072 words, a thousand word passage, that too something about the Prime Minister's visit to China, and the passage is all about the foreign policy, the implications related to the security, so many dimensions are there, business dimension. You don't feel like reading. But do remember, anything that is complicated, if you read, you can easily answer minimum five questions, five marks. Can you afford to lose five marks? You can't afford to do that. So all the questions are like that. They look difficult. Once you read, you can get at least two or three. That will make all the difference. Now let us see questions 126 to 128. How many questions? 26, 27, 28. Three questions. What are the instructions? In each of the following questions, there are four sentences or parts of sentences that form a paragraph. Identify the sentence or sentences or part or parts of sentence or sentences that is or that are correct in terms of grammar and usage. Please underline the word usage. Brackets he writes, including spelling, punctuation, and logical consistency. Then choose the most appropriate option. In my opinion, how many questions are there? Three questions. All the three questions are difficult. Even those who are good at English, they cannot get, in my opinion. I, I will ask how many of you have got these questions correct. If you get these correct, that is really good, highly appreciable. Now tell me, 126, option A, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. What is the meaning of the word garbage? It means waste. What is the other word for garbage? Litter. L-I-T-T-E-R. Please write the word litter. But the word litter has two meanings. The typical meaning is what litter means? Waste, garbage. The second meaning, if you take a dog, it gives birth to five or six puppies. All the puppies together, we use the word litter. Litter means what? The number of puppies, five or six puppies together, we use the word litter. L-I-T-T-E-R. But the regular meaning is what? Wastage or waste material or garbage. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is gyre or gyre, both are right, pronunciation point of view, of marine litter in the central North Pacific Ocean. Now, is this sentence right or wrong? This part, 
how many of you say wrong? Someone has said wrong here. Why is it wrong? No, when you say it is wrong, you should be in a position to tell why it is wrong. No one from there. Is it right or wrong? What do you think? It is right. Uh, why do you think it is wrong? Please mark it wrong. <clears throat> why is it wrong? Please underline the word gyre, G-Y-R-E. And write the meaning. It means a water current. Water current. You know, water currents, flow of water in a particular direction, we call it current, water current. So, Gaia means water current, and it is a collective noun. Collective noun means what? Uh, countable noun means what? Singular and plural. So, any countable noun, before a countable noun, when you use for the first time, what are you supposed to use? Article. So, do you find an article here? So that way, this is not right. It, it should have been a gyre of marine litter. That is the error. That is very difficult to make out. Not that easy. The pa second one is easy to make out. The patch extends over a very wide area with estimates ranging from area. Estimates ranging from, to that extent, the sentence is right. But the last word makes it wrong. Ranging from area, that doesn't make any sense. So, second one is also wrong. The size of the state of Texas to one large as. So, imagine ranging from the size of the state of Texas to the one as large as. What is the correct sentence? Uh, state of Texas to one as large as. But you don't see that. That means what? This is also wrong. However, the exact size is unknown. Do you find any error here? So that means what? What is the answer here? The fourth option. Has anyone got the fourth option? No, as I oh, you got it right. That is really good. I appreciate. I myself found these sentences very difficult, not that easy. Usually I read only once. I had to read two times all these, the three sentences. Not that easy. Now we'll see question number 127. This is to some extent easy because the context is familiar. At media agency Mindshare's Mumbai office. Does it sound right or wrong? If you read regularly, how many of you think this is right? Raise your hands. This is right. If you read, this is a pattern we use. At media agency Mindshare's Mumbai office. Perfect part. Please mark this one right. What is wrong with B? Sit is not correct. Underline the word team. Then what are you supposed to say? Sits a team of 93 individuals. So here it should be, I'm giving the correct form. Please write the correct form. Tomorrow you should not get the doubt why it is wrong. Sit is not correct. It should be sits a team of. A team sits. So sits a team of, a different pattern. Who's or who is? Whose? So this should have been W H O S E. Whose? Please write. Whose only focus? We say whose book is this? Whose focus? So what is the spelling of the word whose over there? W H O S E. So this is also wrong. This is also wrong. In fact, this unit occupies an area. Then after that, the size of most mid-sized agencies in this country. Agency is what is the size of most mid-sized agencies. That is okay. But here, in fact, this unit occupies an area that is the size of, what should be there? An area that is the size of, then the sentence is right. So this is also wrong. That is the size of. That means what is the answer? Only A. Which option says that? Option who has got this one right? Good. This is, to some extent, easy. The next one also very difficult. But if you remember your article, th these sentences are based on articles, knowledge of articles, especially this one. One of the classroom, you don't have to go beyond. Whenever you use a phrase, one of the, the noun should be in the plural form. So what is the correct sentence here? One of the 
classrooms. Oh, let me read the sentence. Now, one of the classrooms exercise I conduct with my persuasive communication students. Fine, fine. One of the classrooms exercise. But classrooms, where should be the apostrophe? No apostrophe. One of the classrooms exercise. You, d you have to use a apostrophe or you don't have to use? How many of you think you have to use? One of the classrooms, one of the students' book. One of the students' book. Then do you have to use apostrophe or not? No. Whose book, whose mobile is this? Imagine the answer is one of the student's mobile. Here, do I have to use apostrophe or not? What is that I'm talking about? I'm talking about the possessive case. Any possessive case, we have to use apostrophe. But here, the noun is in the plural form. Whenever a particular noun, the plural noun ends in the letter S, then what is the rule? We have to use apostrophe after the letter S. So please, we have to use the apostrophe. Add the word classrooms after that apostrophe. At IIMA is taken from Kurukshetra War. Is this right or wrong? Why is it wrong? What is wrong with this part? Those who have learned articles, if you remember, when I taught the definite article the, I said we use the definite article the before wars, uh, revolutions, and mutinies. So what is this one? War. So what is the correct one? The Kurukshetra War, the Second World War, the uh, French Revolution, the Sepoy Mutiny. So the has to be. I ask a student to be Kunti, other to be Karna. I ask a student or one student to be Kunti and the other, the other. So this is also not right. Or I ask one of the students to be this one and the other to be that one. Now Kunti has to persuade Kar Karna to do what? To leave Duryodhana and join the Pandavas. The million dollar question is this. The Pandavas right or wrong? Frankly speaking, even I had to check. Frankly speaking, I had to check. When I cross-checked, whenever we use the expression Pandavas, we have to use a definite article, the. The Pandavas. So that means what? D is right or wrong? D is right. Only one part is right. Which one is that? D is right. Based on that, what is the answer? The fourth option is the answer. I would like to know who has got this one right. Oh, you've got that one right, three or four students. I appreciate that. Suddenly I saw this, I myself, I was in two minds. Do we say Pandavas or do we say the Pandavas? I myself had a doubt. Then I, when I cross-checked, the Pandavas is the correct expression. I appreciate all those students who have got this one correct. So as I said, all these, the, the three questions, very difficult. 129, 130. Based on what? Please underline the key word. When you read the instructions, and nowadays there's one more problem, the new pattern. What is the problem? You have to read the instructions. In fact, last year, when students read the instructions, IBPS, RRB, PO, many of them could not understand the instructions. That was a problem. The instructions were so complicated. In fact, one of the students said, Sir, there were errors in the instruction. <laughs> I looked at him. What are you trying to say? You cannot expect something like that. That means what? He could not understand the instructions. Very simple. Now, these two are easy in my opinion. The second one is rather difficult. This one is rather easy. So what is a given statement? Electricity is the backbone of industrial development. A categorical statement. Clear, easy to understand. So you have to choose a sentence that complements this idea. So many of our new electric projects are lying abandoned. That has nothing to do with the given statement. The authorities are exploring the possibility of starting non-conventional energy sources. That is also not complementary. 
reliable and uninterrupted power is a prerequisite for development. Please underline the word prerequisite. Means what? Something essential or indispensable. Please write the word indispensable. Indispensable means essential. No, I'm sorry. Have you copied that word? Now he says, electricity is a backbone of industrial development. So obviously, if you go for the third option, reliable and uninterrupted power is a prerequisite for development. It complements that idea. So based on that, what is the answer? How many of you have got this one right? Good, that's really good. But next one, in my opinion, not that easy. Our country is rapidly becoming a consumer nation. But this is implied. You cannot uh, make out immediately. The nation must stand on its own legs. That has nothing to do with the given statement. For financial progress, we must reduce import and increase export. Uh, he, here he talks about the people becoming, the country becoming what? A consumer nation. And uh, that means they buy a lot. They consume a lot, they buy a lot. And naturally in a situation like that, what is ideal? You reduce the imports and increase the exports. Then you get financial stability. From that the country progresses from all the directions. So the second option seems correct, but we'll see the remaining options. We want to become financially strong. We have to become is different. We want to become is different. We cannot consider a statement like we want to become. So ruled out. We are not yet independent because we depend on other countries in certain fields. That has nothing to do with the given statement. India must become self-sufficient and reduce importing goods. You can consider this one. This question is a little tricky. That's why I said this is not that easy. In this, this particular question, you can consider the second option. You can also consider first reading the fifth option. But what is the difference between these two options? One talks about reducing imports and improving exports. And the fifth option talks about only reducing imports from becoming self-sufficient. So that does not result in financial growth. So which one is better? Second option, obviously. So what is the answer here? The second option is the answer. All these depend, some of these questions depend on common sense, presence of mind, your exposure to various topics. You cannot choose the, see, the, a question like this, based on grammar knowledge, can you decide? How is it possible? I don't understand. It all depends on your awareness, looking at the question from a different perspective. And how do you get that perspective? When you read a lot, one of the differences, people, sometimes people wonder, those who think of uh, different universities, Today, if you take uh, the Harvard University, it is the number one in the world. Then you take a typical university like Osmania University or uh, the Central University. What is the difference? All are intellectuals, more or less the same infrastructure. The difference is level of thinking. What is the difference? Level of thinking. Once I spoke to an IAS officer, he studied, he's, uh, he, stu he was a student of the Harvard University. So I asked the question, so what difference does it make? Then he said, when you study in the Harvard University, after the course, when you come out, when you look at others, you wonder, how can these people think from such a low level? Do you understand what I say? So you wonder why people think from such a low level? Why can't they think from a higher level? So what is the difference? The level of thinking is different. That's what a good university makes you or imparts you. It always matters from what level you look at something. When you look at something from a higher level, it looks very easy. But you look at something, this, the previous question, you just read casually looking at the grammatical aspects or something else, you cannot. But broader perspective, from a country's point of view, only reducing the imports is not useful. On one hand, you have to reduce the imports. On the other hand, you have to improve or increase the exports. That balances and results in progress. That is pure common sense, right? 
But how many of you can use that and get the correct option? That is a million dollar question. Very simple. Now let us move on. Questions 131 to 133. These are very easy. We have seen so many of these. Almost every day we come across these questions. So one reading, you should be able to get the correct option. So you have to spot the errors. The couples work in upgrading rural technicians, upgrading rural technicians has set a benchmarking for future generations. So which part has an error? Third part, where is the error? Has set a benchmark. ING should not be there, please strike it off. Has set a benchmark. Benchmark means what? A standard that can be emulated or copied or imitated. Benchmark means that is one of the meanings. Another, another meaning of benchmark to allot, to specify. They have benchmarked some resources for something. That's a different meaning altogether. So easy one or difficult one? It has taken almost. The moment you read, you should not read the remaining sentence. It has what? Taken. So please. Which tense is this? Present perfect tense. It has taken. The city needs an airport that can efficiently manage a constantly flow of. Stop there. Constant flow of. Constantly, which part of speech is it? It should not take so long. Adverb. Usually a word that ends in L-Y. Sudden, suddenly, quick, quickly. It is an adverb. Constant, constantly. So where is the error? Constant flow. Don't you think these questions are easy? One reading, not more than that. Now you have a problem. What is it? In each of the following questions, five statements conveying the same idea are given. Select the one which expresses the idea in the most concise manner. Please underline the word. Whenever you read questions like this, always focus on the key word. Based on that, you have to think and you have to answer the question. So what is the key word here? Concise. Now what is the meaning of the word concise? Concise means what? Exact. Any other meaning? Yes? Who said brief? That is exact. Brief. Please write. Concise means brief. Concise manner and mark its number as your answer. Please note that all of them may be grammatically correct and mean the same, but you have to select the most concise way of expressing the idea. Why I consider these questions difficult? Two levels are there, comprehension and the time factor, how fast you can. But when you read all these sentences, what, is, what are these sentences about? The impact of Latin and Greek literature on the English people and the consequences of that. In brief, this is the idea. Now, first option, from the earliest times, the English. Please underline the English. The English is absolutely right. What does it mean? English people. Please write the meaning. The English means the English people. Had been charmed by the glory of Greek and Latin literature. I made a correction. Problem with punctuation. Please put a full stop and use the capital letter for the next word, uh, first letter of the next word, C. In the hard copy, you don't see it that way. Am I right? Consequently, they had overloaded their system of education with classical studies. This seems absolutely right. Now, we'll hold this. We'll check whether other sentences are right or wrong. From the earliest times in the history of England, the English people had been charmed by the glory of Greek and Latin literature. And in consequence, can you use this expression, in consequence? No. Generally, in consequence, consequently, which one is better? Consequently. So based on that, ruled out. And also it looks more lengthy, not concise. Charmed by the glory of Greek, uh, Greek and Latin literature, the English people had and overloaded their system. The English people and overloaded. That, that doesn't sound right. But the instruction says they are grammatically correct. I don't accept. 
fourth one, the English people were so fascinated. Please underline the word fascinated. Fascinated means what? Attracted. Write the meaning of the word attracted by the glory of Greek and Latin literature that they overloaded their system of education for children. But all the sentences talk about education in general. This one talks about children. That way it cannot be considered. Fifth one, charmed by the glory of Greek and Latin literature, the English are overloaded in their system. This also doesn't seem right, grammatically speaking. Now based on this, what is the answer? How many, of, how many of you have chosen the first option? That is the answer. The first option is the answer. But the problem, there was a problem with punctuation. What is the next one? One thirty five. Ever since liberalization has come into existence, people do not hesitate to show off their wealth publicly. Underline the phrase, ever since liberalization has come into existence. Does it look short or long? A little long, right? From the time liberalization has come into existence. Underline this part. Now look at the third option. How does it start? Since the advent of liberalization. So this one is short or long? This one is better, vocabulary point of view, or the previous two are better? This is better. Please underline the word advent. That's a better word. And brief, concise. The hesitation to display one's wealth publicly has virtually vanished. So this seems absolutely right. We'll check the remaining two. From the time liberalization has come into existence, again the same expression, has prevented the display. That is not right. So based on this, what is the answer? The third option is the answer. How many of you have got this one right? Only one student. These are not that easy, nothing to worry. This could be across the country. Don't feel bad or don't think you're not doing well. Please do remember, whatever we see here, the same thing is reflected at the national level. You people don't read the newspaper. Across the country, candidates don't read the newspaper. You people don't read the passage. Across the country, people don't read the passage. You come here without reading the passage. Across the country, the same thing happens. You're obsessed with grammar. Across the country, people are obsessed with grammar. So you're no exception. I hope it is clear. Now let us move on to, what is the question number? Uh, this para jumble, you should be happy. This is an easy one for a change. To make you happy, they have given an easy one. Now what is this about? Uh, uh, how do we start? What is the first sentence? This is all about the former RBI governor, Raghuram Rajan. So what is the first sentence here? All of you can get the first sentence. What is it? Raghuram Rajan was in town last week. Now this one, though it looks easy, you've got to be a little careful. There are certain clues. Now how do you decide the second sentence? He was in town, what does it mean? He doesn't belong to this town. From somewhere else he came here. You understand? The moment you say he was in town, he is in town, what does it mean? He doesn't belong to this place, from somewhere else he came here. So that is a clue for you. Based on that, what will be the second sentence? So where do you find the word tour? E is the second sentence. What is the second sentence? E. His book tour, which attracted wide media attention, coincided with the recent release of RBA's annual report to bring back the focus on an old heartbreak, demonetization. How many of you have got one and two right? That's good. Now the third one, a little tricky. But once you look at the other sentences very carefully, please underline the word. As ever, no issues. Then underline, he also said, uh, here I wanted you to underline the word 
even said that is a clue for you but here how many of you have chosen f as a third sentence that's right based on the those words this is a third sentence now please make a note both rajan and rbi sidestepped the controversy which controversy demonetization right now what is a fourth sentence once you get the third four five six very easy what is a fourth sentence gracious as ever rajan even said he had no issues with the government and was even ready to come back so that goes with the third sentence so please underline uh, for, this becomes a fourth sentence but it goes with the third sentence the previous sentence talks about patching up so it goes with the same idea of line of thought now more information additional information but contrasting but though he said no issues but yes he also said in response to a specific question that the decision to demonetize was not his very easy to make out so what is the fifth sentence d is a fifth sentence and what is the last one it was not his decision then based on that like any other in indian or individual he watched it on tv like all of us i presume his jaw dropped as well you got the meaning so what is the last sentence a is the last sentence i would like to know how many of you have got this or the correct order 1 2 3 i feel this is easy but it depends on if you don't focus on the third sentence see side step the controversy what is a clue for you controversy adding to that the next sentence talks about gracious as ever rajan even said he had no issues with the government and was even ready to come back once you close a controversial issue then this sentence goes with that particular context and then he adds more information but yes he also said in response to a specific question that the decision to demonetize was not his because it was not his decision he had to watch it on tv like all of us simple now let us move on raju i am not happy with uh, the presentation of close and para jumble but this is an easy one so close test i worked out a new model i hope it will help because the other day when i presented a few words in box uh, branches those students they said so we could not make out there was a problem do you remember i brought a lot of words and i presented in boxes the word the part of speech the meaning uh, the, they could not make out so i thought uh, i'm going to take the feedback but still we'll see thanks sir. so what is this uh, close test and i'm going to present this way you see the text you see the blank numbers then you see the words with the meanings you see the words with the meanings then we'll decide which is a right word but first you listen don't look at the options never look at the options see when it comes to close test your approach should be first you read once understand what it is about then take each sentence or one or two sentences then ask yourself what is this sentence about has it got a positive connotation a negative connotation does it give a message does it contradict something based on that you have to select the right word now i'll read out this sentence this autumn the international monetary fund and the world bank will once again hold their annual conference in washington dc at a time when the world order that these institutions is under threat now the clue for you is under threat they cannot afford to stick with business as usual something is under threat usually what is under threat something good or bad bad no no something is under threat usually what is under threat something bad it will not be under threat only good is under threat you understand what i say i repeat the question something is under threat that is good or bad imagine there is a glass house then do we say it is under threat or not glass house looks beautiful but it is always under threat if there is a rock will you say it is under threat definitely not 
So based on that, you have to choose words which are positive. That is what I have been trying to tell. Now we'll see the options. At a time when the opulent world order, but first of all, underline the expression world order. That goes with political science. Political science students can make out this easily. It looks familiar, but people like you, to some extent, difficult. So opulent goes with what? It goes with wealth. It goes with resources. Here I would like to emphasize, many of you may not get the close test, many blanks right. One of the reasons for that, lack of exposure to the context, first reason, first problem. Second problem, lack of awareness about word combinations. English is a combinational language. In fact, I personal, my personal collection, I have about two or three books. The title of the book, Collocations. Collocations means word combinations. That is a technical term used by the professionals. There are separate books on word combinations. Even the native speakers, the Americans, the Britishers, they have to learn the word combinations. And that is the reason why this particular test, close test, Today also it is very popular in those countries. Close test is very popular today also in the US and in the UK. Why is it popular? Even they have to learn the word combinations from a context. We cannot mug up, we cannot learn in isolation. So that is not easy, knowledge of word combinations. So please write the combinations also. Opulent means what? Abundant or luxuriant. So it goes with things, it goes with resources, it goes with things especially, opulent. So here, what, what is the word here or expression? World order. Does it go with that? No. So wrong combination. This is ruled out. What are you doing? You're writing or you're taking, uh, which one do you prefer? Writing, then try to write quickly. And what is the second word? Abstemiousness. What does it mean? Moderate. Now, moderate world order. It seems right, hold that one. But generally, we don't consider. It depends on your awareness. Abstinence. Abstinence means what? Staying away from bad habits, not indulging in bad habits. And what is a typical word for that? Teetotalism. If I don't have any bad habits, I will call myself, I will tell people, I am a teetotaler. Teetotaler means what? I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't have any bad habits. But generally, teetotalism means not drinking, literal meaning. So does it go with this context, the world order? No. So that is ruled out. Second option, I said hold. Third option, ruled out. Liberal. If you go to the Western world, you talk to Americans or Britishers, quite often they use the word liberal. Liberal systems, liberal ideas, liberal institutions. So what is the meaning of the word liberal? Unbiased or not prejudiced. Treat everyone equal. Give due respect to everyone. So they take a lot of pride in using the word liberal ideas. So please underline this and write the meaning unbiased. A rigid, rigid world order. This also seems right, but based on the sentence, at a time when the liberal, we'll, we'll try with the fourth option. Liberal world, world order that these institutions, dissipate, dissipate means what? Disappear or vanish. Usually it goes with emotions or feelings. I want you to listen and write. Uh, try to do it fast. First you write dissipate, meaning disappear or vanish. It also means scatter. And brackets you write feelings and emotions. Feelings and emotions. Then what is the second option? Compulsion. That's an easy word. That's why I haven't given the meaning. Delicate, easy word. Coercion. I think you got this word yesterday, coercive. Means what? Using force or threat. 
so force compulsion underpin this goes with effective english formal english and quite often you come across this word in newspapers what is the meaning of that support justify or form the basis for something form the basis for something have you copied now we'll take the fifth option and we'll see the sentence shall i change so at a time when the liberal world order that these institutions underpin means what justify is under threat they cannot afford to stick with business as usual this seems perfect so what is the answer 141 what is the answer liberal and 142 what is the answer underpin instead they must consider deep reforms and that will require the paternalistic even hostile tone that has often dominated discussion of the topic now paternalistic paternal means what father he in this context it looks a little biased negative meaning it looks negative then hostile what is the meaning of the word hostile hostile means to have enmity to have enmity you don't like someone you hate someone then we say you have negative feelings towards that person then we say hostile attitude and some atmosphere is not positive it is negative then what do we say hostile atmosphere hostile relation so negative word then what is the next one so they will require the paternalistic and even hostile so what do you understand from this sentence they have to leave they have to leave these the negative attitude paternalistic and the negative attitude hostile attitude now we have to select a word that talks about leaving these negative attitudes what is the first word here constraint constraint means what limitation or restriction that doesn't talk about leaving something confine confine means what limit restrict this also doesn't talk about leaving something now what is the third word abandon abandon means what leave or desert as a verb commencement beginning not right and fragile fragile means what weak or breakable that is also doesn't go with leaving so common sense if you understand the context if you understand the meaning which word will you choose third option what is it abandoning these negative ideas means what leaving these negative ideas hope you are listening carefully close is not that easy especially when you come across a passage like this you got to think from a different plane and it all depends on your exposure to certain topics exposure to the language mere grammar knowledge will not help you now we'll move on since the election of donald trump as the us president last november the often upsurge upsurge means what forward movement in nationalist populist sentiment across the western world the weaknesses of existing multilateral frameworks have come increasingly to increasingly to the fore increasingly to the fore means to the front portion to the limelight now what do you understand from this the then you have to select a word we'll see the options first forbearance all these are important words please after the session try to read and remember these words very useful words so what is the meaning of that restraint or tolerance forbearance means tolerance second option is an easy word improbable probable likely to happen improbable unlikely to happen prevention that is an easy word curtailment curtail curtail means what Re reduction or cut back something cut back culmination 
culmination means what? Climax, pinnacle or peak. Now, the sentence is about the nationalist movement or feeling. Now, which option will you choose? Now, you know the meanings. Which option do you think is right? Read the sentence and tell me. How many of you think the fifth option? Don't feel shy. That is the right answer. What is the answer? Culmination is the answer. Culmination of what? The culmination of an upsurge, the peak of an upsurge in nationalist populist sentiment. Now, what is a blank number? Mm -hmm. Here, in one sentence, he has given three blanks. So, I found it so difficult how to present. Now, what I thought, I would present this way. You can see the sentence and you can see the boxes. Is the text visible? Clear? Big and clear. Big enough. But the current crisis of the liberal world, world order, has been a long time in the making. In fact, it has been, underline the, underline the words, has been, it has been, then what will you choose? 145, it has been, we will see the options, please look at the options. What is the first one? Obscure. Obscure means what? Unclear or unknown. Equivocal, very important word, means what? Ambiguous. Jeevan, are they big enough? The, the letters, are they big enough? Branches, those students, they'll be able to make out. Fine. So what is the third option? Apparent. Apparent means what? Obvious. Something that goes without saying. Apparently. Means what? Obviously. Hindrance. Easy word. Block. And... Uh, I don't know, it got repeated. Moderation. Moderation means what? Restraint or self-control. Now, once you know the meanings, at least you should try. Based on that, what do you think? In fact, it has been since before the turn of the century that the post-World War II governance structures were untenable. Untenable means not feasible because the, whatever it is, so which option will you choose? 145. Why no response? First option, obscure. Obscure means what? Unclear. But what is the second word? Equivocal. Both are synonyms. Then which one will you choose? Obscure, ambiguous. Equivocal, ambiguous. That means what you cannot choose? The first option, you cannot choose the second option. So what is the answer? How many of you have chosen the third option? That is the right word. It has been quite obvious. It has been obvious. It has been apparent. So please write. The answer is the third option. It has been apparent or it has been obvious since before the turn of the century that the post-World War II governance structures were untenable because the... Now look at the options 146. Assumptions. Assumptions means what? Supposition or presumption. The words are there on the right. Agnosticism. Agnostic means what? Agnostic. Problem? Huh. Imagine a person believes in God. What is the word? Theist or atheist? Theist. A person who does not believe in God, a theist. Some people, they cannot decide whether God is there or not. What is the word? Agnostic. Agnostic means a person who cannot decide whether God is there or not. But does it go, does it go with this context? No. So what is the meaning of that? Skeptic. Skeptic means what? Doubt. Doubter. Diffidence. Diffidence is opposite word of confidence. Confident diffident, discredit, disgrace or dishonor, ambiguity, vagueness.
Now, based on this, which option will you go for or which option will you choose? First option, that's right. Whoever said, first option. Because the assumptions that formed their foundation were beginning to, what are the words here? Hesitancy, disquiet, crumble, inhibition, repression. After the preposition to, what will you use? Which part of speech? Usually. It should not take this long. You have seen so many questions. Verb. So that is called what? Basic form or infinitive form. To go, to buy, to see. Now, hesitancy, is it a noun or a verb? Forget about the meanings for a while. Hesitancy. Hesitate is a verb form. Hesitancy, noun. Then disquiet, uneasiness. That is also a noun. Crumble. What is it? Verb. It is a regular verb. Crumble, crumble, crumble. So there is one verb. Inhibition. Which part of speech is it? Noun. Repression. Which part of speech is it? Noun. So here you are supposed to use a verb. How many verbs are here? Only one. So that is the answer. What is the answer here? Crumble. Now you take note, make a note of those words and the meanings. How many of you have got all the three correct? Now shall I move on? In particular, with emerging economies, especially China, on the rise, the division between the West and the rest, that's a very good expression, the division between the West and the rest was fast. Here the clue for you, division. Underline the word division. Division, gap, these are synonyms. Then which word will you use? Will you use the word dilemma? Means what puzzle or problem? No. Faltering means what? Loose strength or momentum. A restriction. No. Narrowing. So what is the word that goes with gap or division? The gap is getting narrowed. The division is getting narrowed. So based on that, what is the answer? How many of you have chosen the fourth option? As simple as that. Once you focus on the word division, you will choose only one word. No other word will be considered. Narrowing the gap, narrowing the division. So what is the answer here? The fourth option is the answer. Withholding is not relevant in this context. Yet the global economy is institutional. The IMF and the World Bank have remained largely unchanged. Are you guys listening? I see most of you with lost somewhere. If I ask a videographer to come here and take a pic, then people will think I'm a very bad master. So everyone looks lost. They wonder what is happening. So please try to be attentive and try to understand. No doubt these are difficult, but your efficiency is what? When you do something difficult, you're great. If you do something easy, every Tom, Dick and Harry can do that. What is so special about you? So these are really difficult, you've got to be attentive. Now what is the word here? First you look at the options given. Now I can spread it out. Yet the global economy is institutional. The IMF and the World Bank have remained largely unchanged. Please underline the verb, have remained. That is a clue for you. That means you have to use the word, the noun which is in the plural form. Singular form or plural form? Plural form. Reserve. Is it in the singular form or plural form? Singular. Secretiveness. Singular. Dissemble. Singular. Suppression. Singular. Only one word is in the plural form. Which one is that? Underpinnings. That is the answer. What is the meaning of that word? A set of ideas or motives. The global economy's institutional underpinnings means set of ideas have remained largely unchanged. How many of you have chosen the, this option? Hmm. So please make a note of all these words. Reserve, easy word. Secretiveness, easy word. Dissemble, 
Generally, you think assemble, dissemble. But what is the meaning here? An entirely different meaning. Pretend or feign. Then suppression. The answer is the fifth option. Shall I change? Indeed, what is a blank number? Hmm. Indeed, the multilateral institutions on which global governance rests do not look all that different today than they did in 1944, when Britain's John Maynard Keynes and America's Harry Dexter White, representatives from 44 countries in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, to design the post-World War II international order. So what is the word you think of? Incertitude means what? A state of uncertainty or hesitation. But when you read this sentence, you should understand what. So what do you understand? Representatives, these people did what? They gathered the representatives. They brought the representatives. They made the representatives assemble at one place. So what is the word for that? One is assemble, summon, and what do you see here? Convened. So what is the answer? The fourth option, convened. Convened representatives from 44 countries. Demoral means protest. Disperse means scatter. Convene, bring together or gather. At John, you all must be knowing. Shall I change? Now we have the passage. We can finish in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, no problem. Shall I continue? Oh, fine. So have you copied all the words? Please, please write quickly. Or use your mobile, take a pic. Usually and generally, we see the youngsters most of the time with the mobile. And what I thought when I said, please use a mobile and take a pic, I thought all the students would immediately take the mobile and start. But surprisingly, only a few students are doing that. What is the reason? You want to write, you prefer writing. That's a good thing, but we are, I'm worried about the time factor. It takes a lot of time. So have you copied? Now let us go to the passage. The passage, how many of you have read the passage? Please raise your hands. You could not read. How many of you have read the passage? Ah, no, no, I got it, I got it. Main paper. Much better. Is it close chasing? Good. So how many of you have read the passage? Please raise your hands. Okay. Main, main. Right. Okay. 141 to 150. This is the one. Mm. Okay. So this passage is really tough from two angles. One, the number of words, thousand plus words. Not a joke or not an easy thing to read in that stipulated time period. You got to be very fast and you got to use your presence of mind. The second problem, it is not an easy passage. It is all about the Prime Minister's visit to China. It involves foreign policy, economic factors, political factors, security factors, and the other country's intentions, true intentions, all these things. But I keep telling students, anything that looks difficult is not really difficult. Please understand and remember. This passage looks difficult, so you assume no, no, I don't want to read this because thousand words, it takes a lot of time and so difficult to understand. It's a sheer waste of time. You don't touch the passage. Then indirectly, you're losing five marks. This passage, if you read once, you can easily get five. Minimum I'm talking. 
How many marks? Five marks. We'll see how. Now, those who have read the passage, choose an appropriate title for the passage. Is it the journey? The journey, is it specific? No, so it cannot be considered. Never trust your neighbors, that is also not. In the US, there is a popular saying, what is it? Never trust a stranger. What is a popular saying? Never trust a stranger. The ties, not specific, to China with clear strategy. So the passage is all about the strategy to be taken according to the writer. The writer gives a few suggestions to the prime minister and how he has to be careful, where he has to be careful or cautious. And back to diplomacy, this is a bit vague. So what is the answer? To China with clear strategy. Whoever reads the passage, he will be very happy to answer this question. He will get it right. No second thoughts about it. Question number 152. Which of the following is true according to the passage? In the peaceful rise of China, there is a room of concern and worries for India because some of its act will eventually have adverse effect on India's foreign relations. The passage the writer talks about the calmness, the quietness of China, and he cautions we have to be careful. The, this option is about that. This holds good, hold this one. Don't keep it aside. The launch of new development bank and the Asian infrastructure investment, investment bank is a part of China's alternate financial strategy. This also he talks about in the passage. Many Western analysts believe that China is not presently demonstrating a degree of strategic autism. What is the meaning of autism? Autistic autism. Autistic child. Autism means, actual meaning, literal meaning of autistic means what? Those, the people who have grown physically but not mentally. Autistic children. It's a problem and there are some NGOs, they try to help autistic children. In this context, context it means not acting, remaining, taking a particular stand and not doing anything. So resulting from its growing power. Now this is not true. The passage says, not presently. In fact, it is presently demonstrating a degree of strategic autism. It's quite opposite according to the passage. So based on that, what, is, what does it mean? One and two are right. A and B are right. So which option says that? The second option is the answer. This is not that easy, but still. According to the passage, what does the author suggest Indian PM? As I said, the main intention of the passage, at least to a great extent, the writer talks about China's strategic autism and he wants the Prime Minister to be very careful when it comes to strategic decisions. Strategic studies means related to defense. Please write the expression strategic studies. Strategy has a different meaning. But when you take academics, if you use the expression strategic studies, this is part of political science subject. Strategic studies means related to defense, defense, defense related studies. Have you copied that strategic studies? Please write defense related studies. So the passage is about that. Now let us see which option talks about that. The author suggests the PM to delay the deal of, this is not correct, it doesn't go with the context. The author suggests the PM to be careful about the border issue. It doesn't talk about the border issue specifically. The author wants him to avoid falling in the trap on some strategic issues. Please underline strategic issues, which might seem simpler, but might carry some bitter realities. The passage is all about that. The writer cautions the PM to be careful about strategic issues. So what does it mean? What is the answer? The third option is the answer. Now question number 154. This is an easy one. According to the passage, PM Modi will visit the following countries. China, yes or no? Mongolia, yes. South Korea, yes. 
Russia? No. So which option says A, B, and C? Which option is that? That is the answer. So how many qu easy questions have you seen so far? Three. Remember the number. Now 155. What does the author mean by the phrase become a part of a Beijing contrived security alliance? Become a part of Beijing created security alliance? Alliance, I'm sorry. Become a part of Beijing summoned security? Become a part of Beijing distributed? And become a part of blocked security? I feel it is the first option, what does the key say? Just have a look. Question number 155. The first option, that's right. Become a part of Beijing created security alliance. Beijing created, created by Beijing. Now 156 to 160, based on the words. You should get at least two or three here. What is the first one? Synonym of the word waded. First, write the typical meaning of wade. Wade goes with everyday English. It means walk through, especially water. Please write in brackets water. Walk through water. This is a typical meaning or the primary meaning. But here, do you see that? Does it go with the context? It doesn't go. So please ignore, not right, finish, not right. Write the meaning of the word lays. Lays means to spend your time lazily. S to spend your time lazily or to waste your time. Right? To waste your time. Also write the expression to idle your time. Lays and idle, both are synonyms. Idle your time. Don't idle your time means what? Don't waste your time. So the second meaning of, or the secondary meaning of waded, the answer is the fourth option, assault. Waded also means attack. Attack, what is the other word? Assault. Assault. What is it? Invade. But invade is different. Invade goes more with a country a territory, but here it is more or less, assault goes more with attacking one person or a group of people. So what is the answer for question number 156? Fourth option is the answer. But that one is difficult. So in the passage, the writer uses the word fora. Now, please put a star mark this one. Answer my question, which part of speech is this? It's a noun. Is it a singular form or a plural form? Plural form. What is a singular form? Please write. Forum is a singular form. And fora is a plural form. So what does it mean? Forum means what? Something like a conference or a symposium or a meeting, any of these. So which option talks about? It is in the plural form. So what is the answer here? The second option. The second option, multiple symposium. Symposium, meeting, conference, seminar, they all go with more or less the same context. Now what is the meaning of the word abeyance? Please write the meaning of that. It means not to do something or not to practice something. Not to do something or not to practice something. Then write the word, agreement, simple word, arrangement, simple word. Fifth option is an important word, please write that word, admonish. Admonish means simple meaning, I'm giving the simple word scold, but better words, 
rebuke, reprieve, and they've given one more in the options, reprove. And also one more word, please write, a, a reprimand. All these mean the same. Admonish, rebuke, reprieve, reprove, a reprimand. Have you copied? Now let us go to, so 157, what is the answer? Second option is the answer. Now here you got to be a little careful, 159 and 160. Now 158, which of the following is a synonym of the word countenances, deviant. First, what is the meaning of the word deviant? To deviate, not to follow the regular path. Moderate, reprove, aggregate, allow. Please write the meaning of I already have written a reprove. What, is, what it is a synonym of what? Admonish or rebuke any of these. So answer here, countenance means the fifth option. What is it? Allow. Please make a note. That is the answer. Now 159 and 160, if you go according to the flow, then you have a problem. But these questions I am not convinced. Which of the following is not the synonym? Please underline the word. It is a new model. I am saying for the first time. Not the synonym of the word fraught. First you write the meaning of the word fraught. The typical meaning fraught means to be filled with something. To be filled with something or full of something full of something. That is a primary meaning. Write the second meaning. Second meaning of fraught, anxious. Anxious or worried. Anxious or worried. You know the word anxious. Not anxious, anxious. Worried. So let's say you know the meaning, fraught means anxious or worried. What is the opposite? Which, is, which one is not the synonym? So the first option, calm. That cannot be the synonym of anxious. But other words, alleviate, I am not convinced with that one. Combine, I am not convinced. As I said, the last two questions, I am not convinced with the options. Now again, the same pattern. Which of the following is not the synonym of the word intricate? First, intricate means what? Something that is integral, a part of something. Integral, a part of something. Intricate. It also means something that is complicated. Intricate means complicated. Tangled, complicated, involved. All these are synonyms. Now here he says... Which one is not the synonym? Complicated, entangled or involved or integral, then what is the opposite? Or let us take complicated, what is opposite? Straightforward, not exactly opposite, not the synonym. Straightforward, can it be the synonym of complicated? No. So what is the answer here? Straightforward is the answer. But still I am not convinced with these options. It's a very useful paper. Why is it useful? It is like testing your patience, testing your stress levels, testing your vocabulary, testing your comprehension. There's nothing else left. And one more is there, testing your grammar knowledge. Okay. I would like to know the scores. How many of you have got 35 plus? No, no, please don't laugh. Initially, when I would ask the question, some easy papers, I would ask the question, how many of you have got all the 30 correct? And a lot of students would smile, laugh. They would think, uh, sir is joking. Then slowly what happened, some students, they started raising the hand. Initially one boy, regularly. 
Then we have this student, one girl. Then one more girl. It does happen.